Hey guys, how's it going? And happy Friday. I hope all of you are doing good. This is going to be a different type of stream than I normally do. And I hope you guys like it. And make sure you let me know in the chat if this is interesting and a fun stream. And I think we are going to have a lot of fun tonight. And all of you who are going to listen on replay, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And also please share this video and any of my videos that you think will help people, especially when it comes to Michigan gun control. We're up to about 31 bills now that are in various stages in the Michigan House and the Michigan Senate. And things are not looking good right now whatsoever. And in this video, I'm actually going to be sharing a video of some behind the scenes footage from my recent trip to Lansing. I'm gonna show you guys some behind the scenes that you probably haven't seen before and talk about the way things actually work in the Michigan House of Representatives, how votes are taken, how laws happen, how it's made, kind of like the good, and there is some really, really good, the bad, and the really, really bad. And there's actually some, <laughs> you guys will just see, so just stay tuned. There's some stuff that you're going to see where you're going to wonder yourself, what the heck is going on? But... The focus of this stream, like all of my streams, and this whole channel is to encourage you guys. It really is. Because we're not just fighting for gun rights. We're not just fighting for the Second Amendment. No, it's actually much more serious than that. This is a battle of good versus evil. And evil has prevailed in the past, still is, and will continue to prevail when good men do nothing. Which leads us to the culture war that's going on right now, whether we like it or not. And we can either try to make America, America again, make this a republic if we can keep it, or we can just sit back and say, leave me alone, which would be great. We all just wanna be left alone, except for one problem. The other side's not gonna leave us alone. They're doing everything they can to completely tear down this republic to completely tear down our natural right to keep and bear arms. And when they destroy the Second Amendment, that means they're going to be coming for all of the rest of them so fast. Most people won't even see it. Most people won't even know. I know a lot of you live in Michigan, and I know some of you don't. But I encourage all of you to keep track of what's going on in your state legislature. Go observe what goes on when they're in session on your house floor in your state Senate. And let me know what you guys are doing in your home states. And especially let me know what you guys are doing here in Michigan. So like I said, I'm going to go through and show you guys different things from my recent trip. I've been going to Lansing a lot. And let's just start off here with this. Last week, I went to Lansing, had a great time. I mean, as much fun as you can in Lansing, but I was happy to go because I'm there trying to fight the good fight, trying to bring back information for all of you who might not be able to go, who might be kind of in the dark. And then I was getting ready to go again just this past week. I did end up making it there on Wednesday, thanks to you guys. And that's why I want to thank all of you for this culture that we're building here, this good culture, 2A culture, American culture, patriot culture within this channel, because I kind of ran into a stumbling block. So, but due to you guys, I was able to pull through and made a very, very important trip to Lansing. And I'm gonna share as much of that with you guys as possible tonight. So I wanna thank all of the many ways you guys support this channel. Those of you who leave generous super chats, when I'm live here, those of you who are channel members on YouTube, Patreon supporters, as well as locals, which is an awesome site, censorship free, where I post all kinds of content, including exclusive live streams once a week about stuff that I really can't do here on YouTube. So went there last week, put up, I think about three or four videos at least on what's going on with all this Michigan gun control craziness. Let's call it what it is. We're the normal people. These people are crazy. And craziness is definitely occurring. And I was out plowing snow. And I was driving back in my car because I was using a truck that was on site at the property. And it started to stumble. I'm like, oh, my gosh. My car will barely even run. 
and I got to a red light and had to hold like one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas to keep from stalling. Okay. So I'm like, I did a little scan with my OBD2 sensor machine. So I'm reading it. And I'm like, mm, random cylinder misfire. Is it plugs? Is it wires? Changed all those. Maybe it's an ignition coil. My car has three of those, each of which cover two cylinders. And I'm like, maybe it's that. Well, I went through, diagnosed. It wasn't the plugs and wires. Of course not. It also wasn't the coils. Of course not. It ended up being the ignition control module. It was very expensive. But due to you guys being generous, I was able to get that car running like immediately and get up to Lansing. So I'm going to go through here and play this video that I think you guys will like, and I'm going to stop and narrate. And this is basically how gun control is made. And you're going to see some awesome people in this video, people we need to stand behind and encourage. And I encourage all of you to get behind any 2A defender that has been elected to represent you. You're also going to see some stuff as this video goes on that's quite abhorrent. Just going to put it bluntly. Stuff that you would like to think you wouldn't even see people saying in America or acting like in America, but I'm going to show you all of it. I'm also going to show you what I refer to as the dog and pony show and the way that things work on the floor of the Michigan House of Representatives. And how, yes, you send your representatives there to vote on your behalf. They each represent about 90 to 100,000 people. But you'll watch how they really don't get a chance to vote on everything. And you'll get a chance to see what happens right now here in the state of Michigan. But this applies to all 50 states when the Democrats take over a very narrow majority. I know it. I just said Democrats. I just said a political party, but... If you guys literally look at the thumbnail for this video, I put up the, the board, it's called, the recorded votes. This was a party line vote that every single Democrat voted for and every single Republican voted against. And this was with the universal background checks, registration, licensing scheme. Yeah, registration, which has always led to confiscation in other countries and in my opinion, that's what they're trying to do here in America. And I don't want this to be political at all. I'm not even really a Republican at all. I'm not registered as a Republican. I just tend to find more people in the Republican Party that I can align with than the Democrats, certainly. I wish they could get rid of the two-party system altogether. But I didn't make this political. The Democrats have made this political and they literally have virtually the most narrow majority you can have. So when you see this, I'm going to show you guys some of the House session in a few minutes. You're going to see what they're doing with a two-seat majority. Michigan voted for Trump two cycles ago, in many people's opinion, also in the last cycle, in the most secure, free and fair, and the most fortified election of all time. And for Susan Wiki Wiki and whoever's watching here on YouTube, that is a NewsGuard certified source from Time Magazine. They hold a two-seat majority, and you're going to watch what happens here. You're going to watch what power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Now I started off, I'm going to play this little video for you with some pictures. I'm going to start off with a picture from last week. I went up to see my Senator Joe Bellino and my state representative, Jamie Thompson. And this is her and I. We had just got done walking over from the Senate building in front of the main Capitol building. And we were just talking about things as friends do. She's my representative, and I'm, I'm proud that she's representing me in Lansing, Michigan. But more important than that, she's also my friend. And I, I really liked this picture that we did together. So I wanted to start it off on a positive note of me standing here with my friend. Now, if any of you live in southeastern Michigan, tomorrow at Supermatch GNA, Jamie and I are going to do a meet and greet from 4 to 5 p.m. If you're interested in that, I posted it on my Facebook. Make sure you guys are following me over there if you're into that. And right here on the community tab of my YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, you just go over and hit community. And 
You'll see it right there at the top. I'd love for some of you guys to come. Jamie would love for you guys to come. And you can meet me if you want to. And you can meet a current sitting state representative and talk to her about issues in our district, in our community. And that's what she's been elected to do, to serve all of us and represent us in Lansing. So I started it off again with me hanging out with my good friend. And this was a good day. I just wanted to start it off a little positive there. Now here's me plowing snow just a couple days before out in the middle of the night. That's the problem is here with my F-350 stake dump, it will not fit into a parking structure. So driving this up to Lansing is basically out because there's no way to put this thing. Okay, so it was at night. My car had broken down. This was a day and a half before I was supposed to be going to Lansing. I'm like, I can't drive my stake truck there because I literally can't park it have to get the car fixed right <laughs> cleaning off this mounting plate here this x is the heat sink trying to get some of this old thermal grease off of here the I icm that's where that goes water. get a nice connection if you don't do this and don't use the paste on the back of your icm it's going to overheat Trying to get my car going by the morning. I'm just using some silicone grease, dielectric grease. Really what you want to use is some heat sink compound, like what you put on a um, computer CPU. This was late the night. This will be a lot better than nothing. And I will take this off in a couple days when I get some heat sink, some of the fortified compound, and wipe this off and redo it. But just looking at a thin film here. Thank Wish you guys to help support the channel. And literally, right. that's how I'm I was able to get coil to pack on here. Hopefully, that will be it. I'll be test firing it up in just one second here. Get these final torque on these little screws. I was worried about these screws. They were kind of rusty on the head, but I found just the right socket. And there was still enough meat on there. All right. We'll see. All right, me and Jeremy the moment were out there working on my car late at night. So far, running sounds like it's running smooth. All right, let's see if I'm running on six cylinders yet. Come over yep. here. I was back there checking the exhaust because when I was running on six cylinders, there was like a real rich exhaust puffing out of there, and it was good at this point, so I fixed it. Nice and steady, low rumble. No. All right, so now she feels like she's running on all six so far. You take it for a quick spin down the road. Jeez, oh, Pete. <laughs> Ran down to AutoZone and bought a Duralast ignition control module for... 275 bucks when I had one in my Amazon cart that would have got here on Thursday for like $77. So like, yeah, 200 and well, about $175 difference. Because I needed to go to Lansing on Wednesday. That's when the committee hearings were. That's when this gun control is going to be voted on. This was late Tuesday night and I had to buy a part locally or I wasn't going to be able to go but you know what guys i think i got it there it took me a few tries i'll have to reset that pending engine code on the dash there i if my camera can focus or read it but we're talking like 226 000 miles on this 05 buick lacrosse so it's not new but i am really glad that I think I got it going here. So now she's got a new tune up and new ignition control module. And I have a set of three ignition coils, which I thought was the issue originally was one of the coils because it wasn't throwing any spark. But it's kind of like a trial by error thing in a way for me. I'm sure some of you guys that are better mechanics than me know, but when I see that one of the ignition coils isn't throwing spark, I think to myself, well, I need new coils or new ignition control module. The coils were cheap. So I thought, well, 
may as well buy a set of three instead of one because it's about the same price, just a little bit more. You know how this stuff goes. Basically, when you buy a set of three, it costs like the same as one and a half or two individuals. So I thought, well, the car's, let's see here, 18 years old. If one coil went bad, maybe change all three. Well, in this case, it was not the coil itself, but the ignition control module. 3,800 engine, by the way, if you guys are wondering. Some of the other lacrosses came with different engines that have the um, coil, coil over ignition with the coil pack bolts right there on top of the spark plug. But this still uses the plugs and wires. I think I am good, so knock on wood. Let's see here, there's some wood trim in this car. Knock on wood, I should be good to go. With. Well, it's a fake plastic wood trim that's in like older Buicks. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Do Lansing. Here's just a little peek in the back shop that I talk about sometimes. Oil supplies, all kinds of different tools and stuff. Oh, yeah, I've been working on my stuff and keeping it on the road or on the lawn or whatever the case may be for a long time, guys. Okay, so I got the car fixed. Again, thank you so much for you guys that have been generous to help the channel, and I was ready to go there. No, I will say, my friend Rob, in the meantime, when I was trying to work on my car, my friend Rob from 2A Patriot, I was talking to him. He's like, dude, you can drive your truck to the, a parking ride. We can carpool. We can meet together. So he did offer to give me a ride. That would have been my plan B. But I wanted to drive myself because I ended up picking up my friend, Jane Locke. I don't know if you're out there tonight, Jane, but Jane's a patriot, longtime friend of mine and the channel, Vietnam veteran. So it was awesome hanging out with Jane. She went to the Capitol with me. And here's just some pictures that I took of the building. Magnificent, beautiful building if you just look at it from an architecture standpoint. There's the old Union Cannon out on the front yard. There's Rob that I was just talking about from 2A Patriot. He runs a local Second Amendment group in this area. Nice guy. Okay, so here's the committee hearing. Okay, so before a bill can become a law, it has to go through committee. And they did have a committee hearing that day. This is just a picture that I took of it while I was in the room. Now, sitting about three chairs next to me is a gentleman named John Lott. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. If you haven't, you should. And in fact, if you check the link down in this description, there's a book that he wrote called More Guns, Less Crime. I highly suggest that you own that book. Have it as reference and understand it because this guy is literally like the brightest mind and the foremost expert when it comes to crime stats throughout the United States and throughout the world. And if you look at over half of the states in this country that are now quote, constitutional carry or permitless carry, whatever they call it, he testified at almost all of those state houses to help them pass pro-gun legislation. Well, he was nice enough to come all the way to Michigan to testify in front of this House committee that was literally getting ready to try to pass this bill through committee quickly and then get it to the House floor on Wednesday, which, spoiler alert, they ultimately did. So John Lott's up there, and you've got people from the other side. There was tons of anti-gun people, gun control groups, all the famous ones, all the ones that you've infamous ones, I should say, right? Mom's demand, this and that. They're all there. Okay. They also had prosecutors that were there to speak against the Second Amendment. Look, I'm trying to tell you guys behind the scenes what happens here. Prosecutors that are supposed to be answering to, so they're in the court system, and they're supposed to answer to a blind lady who's blindfolded and holds a set of scales and a sword supposed to be non-biased people that are supposed to be looking at the law, equal protection under the law, and all of these people take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. 
and in this case, the Constitution of Michigan. And they were there advocating for gun control. And all of these people were there advocating for gun control. Now, they would barely let anybody on the pro-Second Amendment side speak, but they did let Mr. Dr. John Lott speak. And Lott was up there just shredding them with facts. I mean, like, literally, like, just go home, sign a die. Like, it should have all been over. Like, this committee's adjourned. We can't pass gun control because he literally just proved that it doesn't work. He literally proved how much more dangerous Michigan and the United States will become and has become the more gun control laws get passed. But they didn't do that. In fact, they wouldn't even let him finish speaking. And when one of the only two or maybe three Republicans that were on the panel, look, go back to what I said earlier. The Democrats have a two-seat majority. That's it. 56 to 54. There's 110 Michigan representatives that represent all 10 million plus Michiganians. And instead of making the panel, let's just say, oh, I don't know, seven to six, which is what would be proper. No, they make it like 11 to two or nine to three. So, yeah, that's what they're doing right now with a very narrow majority. So Representative Fink, when it was time for him to get to ask his like very limited questions, his question was, would you like to finish speaking? Because the chair of this committee, Representative Breen, was very quick to cut off John Lott, which the state of Michigan was very lucky to have there. And I can't prove this, but I don't think anybody paid him from the state of Michigan to come there. I think he funded that through his own group, from what I understand. But I was glad he was there. And he was literally laying down facts like you've never seen before. That just refutes anything and everything to do with these fallacies of if it would just save one life. And guns are the leading cause of death of this and that. They were doing every fallacy you've ever heard of the other side. But not only did they cut off one of the key people testifying, John Lott, look him up if you're not familiar. His resume literally speaks for itself. This would be like if you could bring George Washington back to speak in front of Congress to gun rights and crime stats. That's what John Lott is. He's like the founding father of crime stats and like literally the best in the whole world. And then they got out and out rude with the man. At a certain point, one of the Democrat reps said, hello, goodbye. Like in just the rudest, most snide fashion you could think of. And basically told him, take a hike. So there was a committee hearing. And this is a picture from that. But it was just a formality. And they didn't really want to debate. And they didn't really want to hear any of the truth, in my opinion. You can see the chair right there in the middle with the black blouse or whatever on there, glasses. I don't know her personally. Don't really care to know her personally, but I observed her being rather rude and other members. Okay. So we're walking around talking to reps throughout the day. Started off in Representative Bob Bazat's office. That's where I met up with my friend Rob. Jane was with me, hung out in his office, talked about the Second Amendment, talked about potential strategy to see how we can possibly defeat these bills. Went around and talked to a decent amount of representatives, ran into Representative DeSanta in the hall. Of course, I stopped by Representative Thompson's office, talked to her for a little while, ended up walking over to session with her. Well, they had like a eight, nine hour session total. And I'm not going to show the whole session tonight, but you guys are going to see part of the official house floor session. This is going to be the fun part in a minute here. And we were over in Representative Steve Cara's office. He's the representative on the right. Representative Neil Frisky is on the left. And I took a video of what happened, and this is like the first time this has happened to me. Creators always talk about this, but I went to download the off my card, off my phone tonight when I was making this video, and the file was corrupted. I really wish I could have showed you guys the video, but here's a still picture. And this will show you guys where we're at right now in certain places in this country, and in this case, Michigan. 
So let's back up. There's apparently a rule in the house, on the house floor, the decorum of the house, right? Where you're not allowed to have props at the member's desks. Now they sit at old wood desks. It's fairly cramped quarters. I sat at that desk with my representative because I was honored to be her house floor guest on January 11th when they started the new session. And there's not a lot of room for stuff down there, but there's a little bit, okay, a little bit. And the other side of the aisle, okay, that's just literally how this works. There's the one side of the main aisle and the other side of the main aisle. That's where we get the saying, the left and the right. The Democrats sit on the left and the Republicans sit on the right. OK, so everybody over on the left side of the aisle, which happened to be members of the Democrat Party in this case, they all had flags on their desks. OK, and they were the pride flag, as I think it's called nowadays. I don't know all the politically correct terms. Don't even care to know all of them. The rainbow flag. They all had rainbow flags on their desk. And they're like, OK, so I guess we're now allowed to have flags on our desks because the rule was. You can't have props on the house floor, and most of the representatives kind of understood that. So with that said, for background knowledge, so you guys know what I'm talking about, we were up in Representative Kara. He's the gentleman on the right, super pro Second Amendment, both of these guys. And when Jane and I were in his office, and he's like, I've got about 10 minutes to talk to you guys, and then I have to go back to session. Okay, cool. We're talking, and he's like, he was like, where'd my staff go? Did they leave? Well, they hadn't left. They had just gone out in the hall and come back. He's like, I need help carrying this flag. So in the meantime, Jane is like, I'll help you carry this part and whatever. So we're walking over with him. And you can see Representative Frisky here on the left holding a flag. This is an American flag that all the representatives have in their offices. So they said, well, hold on a minute. If the left side of the aisle can have these pride rainbow flags up, okay, we can bring our flag in and they're proud of the pride flag and we're proud of the of the rainbow flag, right? We're proud of the American flag. That's the, you know, the oath that we took to is to the Constitution of the United States. Okay. Well, here's the problem. We call these red coats for slang. This is the sergeant at arms of the house. They answer to the speaker of the house, which is Speaker Joe Tate. He's open to assault weapons bans. He's open to much, much more than that. Check out my recent video if you missed it, right? So they're like, we're going to bring our American flags in. They were physically blocked and denied. Like it started off. And I wish I had the video so bad, guys. I was so excited to show it to you. But the file got corrupted. But you can still see the gist of it here. And that's why I'm filling in the gaps. So right here, the sergeant at arms were literally standing. And at this point, it was like, well, I guess we have to leave. But just 30 seconds earlier, he was standing there literally blocking the entrance. Like, halt. Who goes there? You cannot bring these American flags onto the house floor. So in America, we have a house chamber that according to the sergeant at arms staff, there's several that work there. They guard the house office building across the street. This is the house chamber. You can see through that partially open door. They guard those chambers. They're armed guards that have policing power, if you will, within the areas that are controlled by the, in this case, Speaker Tate of the Michigan House of Representatives. Well, by the time they got there to bring their flags in, to put at their desks for this upcoming session, they were told, no, you're not allowed in here. We were given direct orders. So we now live in a country, and in this case, in the state of Michigan, where 56 people can have rainbow flags on their desks, but these sitting representatives could not bring in an American flag. Now, this was before the gun control vote. We're going to get to the part on that in just a minute here. But what do you guys think about that? I mean, they literally wear red coats. And when we call them red coats, it's like, well, you know what I mean, right? I think I just saw somebody in the chat that said, yeah, Gort just said the red coat analogy is spot on. Neil Frisky, Representative Neil Frisky on the left of this picture, Representative Steve Kara on the right. They tried to make a stand. Said if they can have their flag, we can have ours. Denied. Their staff had to carry them back. All the way across the whole Capitol building, down the several flights of stairs, across the front lawn, 
into the Anderson House, house Office building, back up through the elevators, and yeah. They were literally denied. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, okay, I just watched this dog and pony show committee hearing. Where John Watt was, in my opinion, treated rudely and disrespected. Now, keep in mind, as I'm watching them getting denied bringing an American flag into the chambers of the house, into what's called the house floor, that's the people's house. That's owned by everybody who lives in Michigan. And these two gentlemen aren't just two people. Each of them are representing almost 100,000 people. One state representative, Representative Maddock, was able to sneak a flag in a little bit earlier before these guys came through. And we were told under no uncertain terms, or the representatives were told, and I was just there as an observer, that he's going to be in big trouble. He's going to be in big, big trouble, the one that snuck it in. So these guys were denied 56 rainbow flags. Fine. These particular American flags. Not okay. And I said, oh, great. So this is the tone of the evening. And now they're going to be voting on gun control in a couple hours. Just think about that for a minute. This is America, guys. And I want you guys to see this. And you're going to see some really crappy stuff here on the House floor in just a minute. You're going to see some good motivational things on the House floor. But I'm going to come over here for one second, and then we're going to play about, oh, I'd say 20 minutes of this House session. You can see it's already 9 o'clock at night. This was an all-day affair. There's Jamie right there. You can see the back of her. She's standing at the, um, the little podium there. If you guys want to meet her in real life tomorrow, check my um, community post. She's an awesome lady. Awesome representative. Make sure you guys check that out. So I'm going to come over here real quick and tell you guys why we need to see what we're about to see. And why I'm telling you guys all of Because I know some of you live in Michigan. Some of you don't. But this is America right now. That This is happening in. A country where there's a state that they took a narrow, narrow majority, right? And now they're literally just running roughshod right over the founding documents of not only Michigan, but the United States. And you're going to hear some floor debate, if you will, where they're giving these little floor speeches, talking to some of them are going to talk about why they urge their colleagues to vote for this gun control. This would be the universal background checks, licensing, registration. Obviously, the real goal is confiscation. We all know that. They're not even hiding it anymore. And you're going to see some stuff that is just so sickening and just some talk and rhetoric that's so insane. But I want you guys to see it. Because although this is new in a way, and a lot of you are saying, geez, what times are we in right now? Well, we're at a time where you can fly a rainbow flag. 56 people can, but you can't bring in an American flag. And then you remember, especially if you read the Bible, that the Bible tells us there's nothing new under the sun. And I think Thomas Jefferson predicted this a long, long time ago. A long, long time ago. But even more specifically, on July 4th, 1776. And I want to show you guys some despotic things that you're about to see. And I want to show you guys this <laughs> system of government that they're putting in place now in Michigan. And I want you to see this dog and pony show. Because the Declaration of Independence in the very opening talks all about this and how long people will put up with this and how long people won't put up with this. And we vote and we urge and we should urge and we should vote and we should get behind the good reps and we should call out people that are violating our Second Amendment protected right to keep and bear arms. But we really just need to win this battle of good versus evil. And we really need to win this culture war. And I think sometimes to myself, man, what would Thomas Jefferson think if he knew about some of these shenanigans going on right now in Lansing? He'd probably be so shocked he'd pass out. And then I realized, no, no, 
he was a lot tougher than any of us right now. He's a lot tougher than me. And he probably would just chuckle and look at me and be like, come on, dummy. I knew about this would happen. Why do you think I just wrote the Declaration of Independence? In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. Sometimes it's time to go over the head of these politicians and go straight to the American people. And that's what we need to do. And we need to let these guys know you're going to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States and the state of Michigan, or you're going to have to get out. And it just depends how much people are willing to deal with in the meantime. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth, this is where you get your powers from, not from Jefferson, certainly not from the Speaker of the House of Michigan, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the cause which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's literally just beautiful. Like, that's all we want, right? Just leave us alone. If we can have all those three things, great. I mean, I certainly wouldn't ask for anything else, would you? But to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That's why I'm going to Lansing. That's why I'm talking to my representative, my senator, and as many as possible. And that's why you need to as well. See, there's become this notion lately with a lot of people in the gun community that whatever, they're just representatives. Why would we talk to them? Why would we even care they exist? Well, maybe because that was literally the blueprint of what this country was set on. We're not a straight democracy. A democracy is two wolves voting against one sheep on what's for dinner. A representative constitutional republic is what we have in America. And it's what we have in Michigan. And Thomas Jefferson literally is spelling this out right here. Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Representative Jamie Thompson has a lot more power than me in Lansing because she can cast a vote on the board of the official record. And she did, and you guys will see that in a few minutes. But the only reason she has that power is because all of us in her district put her there. And the only reason any of your representatives or senators have power is because you put them there. I just want to call attention to that because some people lately have been trying to come up with this misconceived notion that the more patriotic they are, the less you should engage with your government. And I think Thomas Jefferson would vehemently degree, uh, disagree with you. I mean, I'm reading it to you right now, but if you don't believe me, you can read it for yourself. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them, that would be you, so seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. So why are we here? How we get to this point? Would Thomas Jefferson be surprised? Of course he wouldn't be. I'll continue. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. How many gun controls is enough before people are going to start getting it in this state? Is two enough? Three enough? How about seven or eight? 9, 10, 11, 20, 29, what about 31? I mean, that's how many are pending. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies and Jesus, oh, Pete's living in a state 
where they're putting up 31 gun control laws, allowing the rainbow flag to fly, but denying sitting members of the House to bring in an American flag, such as the patient sufferance of a lot of good people in Michigan right now and in Washington and in Colorado and California and New York and a lot of my good friends that I see in this chat right now throughout these United States. After a long train of abuses and usurpations. I don't know when enough's enough, but I'll tell you what. First, we have to let everybody know what's going on. I'm still running into a lot of people here in Michigan that are like, really? How could we have gun control? We haven't had gun control in Michigan since I can remember. And these are old people, you know, saying this. I'm like, it's literally happening right now. That's part of the culture where first you have to identify what your enemy's doing before you can even have a chance at winning the battle. And that's what I'm here to do, to try to motivate all of you. We have to talk to people. Yes, call your representative, call your senator, write them. But probably just as important, if not even more important than that, is to be talking to your friends in the pub, in the tavern, like the founding fathers did, in the chat room, in the YouTube chat, whatever it takes. We need to start talking to each other and say, is this what we want? Is this a country that we see is most likely to affect our safety and happiness? And if that's the case, then I guess everything's great. But if it's not okay, then it's not okay to do nothing. Because evil's going to keep prevailing as long as good men do nothing. And we've had good times in this country. We have. And good times make weak men. And there's a lot of people who are pretty weak in this country right now, but the country's going downhill so quickly. And the state of Michigan's going downhill so quickly, I'm hoping that as history has shown in the past that these bad times are going to make strong men. And then, of course, strong men can then in turn make good times. See, the founding fathers have realized they were under absolute despotism. And they said, it's our right, it's our duty to institute a new government. Now, a right is something to be cherished. And a duty is something that's different than a right. If you have the right to do something, that means you can do it if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to. A duty is a little bit different. A duty means you have to do something. You have to change a government that's become tyrannical, that's ruling outside the rule of law, and that's contrary to these ends. You know, talk to all of your friends how you will, but if you're saying, hey, man, you probably should get more involved and find out what's going on in this state of Michigan, in my case, or whatever the state is, and they're kind of shrugging you off. You might want to turn around and say, no, actually, you have to. If you want to keep calling yourself an American, it's a duty for you to help save this country and help save the Second Amendment. And politics has always been, and I didn't come up with this saying, Andrew Breitbart did, but he's been dead for quite a while now. But I want to carry this along because I believe it's very, very wise to remember. Politics is downstream from culture. You know? A lot of these people are there to defend the Constitution of the United States, and in my case, in the state of Michigan, in my state. But a lot of them really aren't there for that at all. They're only there for power. And when they realize they have a chance of losing that power, they either lose it or they realize they better change their ways. Doesn't mean you have to make friends with these people. Although some of them are actually really cool people. And you're going to see a couple of them on the floor of the Michigan House of Representatives in just a minute. Some of them probably not that cool at all. But that doesn't matter. This is representative of what's going on in the state of Michigan. Because these are the Michigan representatives. And the fact that we're losing these votes on gun control is probably because we've been losing the culture war. There's a lot of people right now that shoot guns like crazy and say things like from my cold dead hands, but they're voting for people that are literally on the house floor trying to take away all of their guns. And a lot of people don't know that. And that's where you guys come into play, talking to people, having discourse, 
trying to help improve the Second Amendment culture, the gun culture, the American culture, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. I don't know all the big words for all these things, but I know it when I see it. Basically, people who want to be Americans, and people that, in my opinion, want to be communists, and we can never, ever, ever let this become a communist country. It's actually a lot closer than I would even like to admit. But if it takes over, you can vote your way into communism, but you have to shoot your way out of it. I don't want that. I was talking to my state representative on the phone today, and we're excited to hang out with hopefully quite a few of you tomorrow at Supermatch. Check out my community post if you guys want to hang out with us tomorrow. And she told me a story. And I've heard stories like this before, but she reminded me of this. She was doing a lot of door knocking when she was out on the campaign trail to get elected and talking to people and getting to know people in her community. And she remembered talking to a Romanian lady. And she remembered the conversation because the lady had had left Romania to get away from communism and move to America. And this also reminds me of so many things that my viewers have told me. And some of you might chime in tonight because I do have viewers from other countries who watch this channel. And I appreciate you guys. We have people from all the way across the pond rooting for us over here right now in Michigan, in the United States. And bless all of you over there. Keep fighting the good fight wherever you are. But here's what they keep telling me. And this reminded me of what Jamie Thompson told me earlier. They say, look, we came to America because there's nowhere else to go. Or we'd like to come to America, some of my viewers tell me someday. Don't lose your Second Amendment. Because if you guys lose it, where will we go? See, if the United States of America becomes a communist country, we can't run to England because they've already banned all the guns. We can't run to Canada. Shout out to my friends in Canada. I know there's some awesome people living in Canada. There really are. But we can't run to Canada because they're in the process of banning literally everything as well. Mexico, I think you can have a 22. Where are you going to go? You're not going to go anywhere. Well, this constituent, meaning somebody that lives near my hometown, when she was talking to Representative Thompson, she said, I came over from a communist country to escape communism and, and live in America. And now she's very patriotic American and pro-Second Amendment. And then she saw her at a gathering here just recently. And she remembered that lady. You guys need to think about that. It's not like, oh, well, ho-hum. I guess if it takes over, I'll just whatever. You see, here's the thing. A lot of people right now are saying, I'll just leave the state of Michigan. Not a problem. I'm just out of here. Hey, you do you. I'm not telling you to stay. I'm not telling you to come. I'm not an authoritarian. Why would I ever tell you how to make the most important, intimate decisions in your life? But when I hear that, it kind of reminds me of people in other countries that talk to me here on this channel and maybe to some of you where are you gonna go sure right now in the interim i can go from michigan down to ohio okay until enough things change there and then they start denying the american flag there in lieu of the rainbow flag and then maybe ohio might put up 30 gun control bills in the next couple of years i hope not but if you would have asked me just a few years ago in Michigan, I would have said, no, we have almost a super majority of generally pro-gun voters in the House and Senate. But it happens that quick. And sure, if Ohio gets taken over, then I could go down to Kentucky. Kentucky already has a Democrat governor that's good friends with Governor Whitmer, by the way. And then I can camp out in Kentucky and be great there for a while till they take that. Then Tennessee. Have you been in Nashville lately? It reminds you of being in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's so liberal. And then I could keep going a little bit further and I could go to the state of Georgia where Stacey Abrams almost won governor. And where the two United States senators in Georgia are both Democrats equally to the two 
United States senators in Michigan. So in many ways, Georgia is almost as blue as Michigan. Maybe not on the state level, but on many levels, literally. Hmm. Do I keep going down further south to Florida? Where now Senator Furman or Governor Scott signed in red flag laws. And you can't even enhance the trigger on your firearm in Florida. Because it's a gunshine state and shout out. I have tons of good friends that live in Florida. Very draconian gun laws in Florida. I think I, I don't think I need to keep going. I think you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Everyone just has this quick, like, we'll just go somewhere. Where are you going to go? It's Michigan. It's Oregon. It's Washington. It's Colorado a few years ago. It's this one. It's that one. It's That's why I think a lot of you guys will be interested in watching this house session with me. And just a minute here. Throw up some of those super chats, Linda. I really appreciate the generosity of you guys. And I'm kind of taking you guys behind the scenes right now and narrating. And I'm going to show you some footage, some more footage here. So you guys can see what's going on. And I think this footage will be interesting for any of you guys, whether you're in Michigan or not. But I know I have a lot of Michigan viewers. And shout out to all of you guys. St. Vicari with the super chat and a channel member. Thanks, man. Generous super chat. He says, keep fighting. Never give up. Love you, bro. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate the encouragement. And same thing to you, dude, and everyone else that's watching right now. StreamYard's having a glitch. It says zero people are watching. I have a hard time believing that, but shout out to whatever number it is over zero that's watching this right now. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm um, Colin out with the super chat. Thanks, Colin. And you just became a recent channel member I saw earlier tonight. Says, did you check out Uper Hats? They could make hats. You know what? I did not, man. Between the plowing of the snow and I was just out salting last night. My car breaking down. But thank you for reminding me. And will you make a note of that for me, please, Linda? Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Band talk. Jeez, dude, super generous, super chat. Thanks so much, man. And you've been a long time channel supporter. And I know it's not necessary, dude, but I really, really appreciate it, man. He a hundred dollar super chat. He says, Freedom is not a gift bestowed upon us by other men, but a right that belongs to us by the laws of God and nature. And that's beautiful. I like that so much. Ben Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. Freedom is not a gift bestowed upon us by other men. And, dude, you know me so well that that's literally perfect for what I'm talking about tonight. I've said it so many times, and I'm going to keep saying it again. Benjamin Franklin, he was great. And I wish he was still living right now. Thomas Jefferson was also pretty great, and I wish he was still living right now. But even as awesome as they were, and still are in many ways, being the founding fathers of this country, they didn't give us our rights. Because if a great former leader gave you your rights, that would mean a current despotic leader would have the power to take them away. They only have the power to take your guns if you let them, guys. And I don't mean like in some kind of like brutal standoff way. You know what I think it's going to come down to? Last summer I was down at um, Eric from Iraq Veteran 8888's range and he does host a nice event there and I know a lot of you guys probably like his channel, whether you like his channel or not. He's actually a pretty cool dude. And I did a video with him. I said, what are we going to do about all this gun control that's coming through? It wasn't coming through Michigan at that time. There was a bunch proposed on the federal level, right? With the Democrats holding the House, the Democrats holding the Senate, and the former vice president holding the White House. And it was like, ooh, what if a couple of the guys waffle and go over... It was like, we could defeat the filibuster. Well, they ended up actually passing. Actually, rather comprehensive gun control. We call that the Senator Cornyn of Texas bill, by the way. That's the Senator Cornyn bill. Cornyn McConnell bill. Put it on them the hardest. And all of like the 20 Republicans that went with it. Shelley Moore Capito from West Virginia even. Can you believe that? West Virginia voted for it. Anyway. And if you guys have been around the channel a while, you saw that little video. If not, you can probably still find it. It's still published here. I said, Eric, what are we going to do? And he said, you know what? I think it's going to come down to noncompliance. I think it's going to come down to noncompliance. 
when they talked about prohibition, there was a United States constitutional amendment to outlaw the sale of alcoholic liquor, spirits, whatever the wording was at that time, alcohol, bluntly. And it got to the point where the people said, you know what, I shall not comply. And they arrested some people and they gun control actually arose out of that. They used that. Never let a tragedy go to waste. But I digress. I'm talking about the National Firearms Act. It just got to the point where there were so many darn speakeasies and so many people saying, we're just going to drink whether you like it or not. That's what I mean. There's lawmakers. There's law. And then every once in a while, you have to go over the head of the government and go to the American people. And the American people at that time said, no, we're going to consume booze whether you like it or not. Now, that's not even an enumerated right in the Constitution. It doesn't say the right to drink alcohol shall not be infringed. Although a free country, you would have the right to be able to imbibe so long as you're not infringing upon the rights of others. You're not allowed to drink to the point where you kill somebody because now you're infringing upon the rights of another. I think we could all agree on that basic premise. But generally speaking, whether it's good for you or it ain't good for you, you have the right to drink in this country. That's what it means to be free. Okay. I don't personally drink. I don't like the taste of it. I don't like how it makes me feel. But just because I don't like it, I'm not going to tell you you can't. And that's all we really want from the people on the other side of guns. You don't like the recoil. You don't like the smell of gunpowder. Fine. Don't shoot. Just don't go shooting with me and I'll go shoot. Like, what's the big deal? Well, <laughs> that's not how the other side works, unfortunately. So at a certain point, they just said, you know what? We're going to drink and whatever. And then the government finally said, all right, well, we better make it legal again. And it wasn't just because they were nice. It's because they knew they had to. They had to. They couldn't. There was so much noncompliance. When it gets to the point where like 10% of the people are complying and 90% are, not they can't arrest them all. They can't put them all in prison. There's not enough resources to prosecute them all. And they know that. So I don't know exactly how this looks when it comes to guns. But I'm open to that idea. If you guys want to talk about it in the chat, I'm not advocating for anybody here publicly to break laws. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm just talking about the overarching general thing of civil disobedience, noncompliance. Now, that's not just for the regular people. That's also for a lot of you guys are in two-A sanctuary counties, two-A sanctuary states even, county sheriffs, hmm? county sheriffs who have a lot of power within the Constitution to protect and defend the Constitution, even against other forms of government law enforcement. So this is about will your county sheriff comply? Will your county board of commissioners comply? Will your city or township council comply? There's a gun control bill that they're trying to fast track through Michigan right now that would make it where local jurisdictions, including counties, cities, villages, townships, can start enacting their own gun control. So this civil disobedience, I shall not comply, all of that is on many levels. Ultimately, though, the power is inherent in the people. And when you look at the 10th Amendment, they call it the state's rights amendment. Many Republicans call it that. Many conservatives call it that. And many of them are my friends. But they're actually all wrong. The state's amendment, the Tenth Amendment is not states' rights. I'm not, I'm not joking, though. Literally. I know there's somebody right now listening, and it's cool. I get it. Because I used to think the opposite, too, at one time. I just used to listen to all the people. on The Tenth Amendment gives states their rights. No, there are no states' rights, because no form of government has rights. Only people have rights. All rights are inherent in the people. Every last one. Read the preamble to the Michigan Constitution, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. They knew that when they wrote that document, and Thomas Jefferson knew it when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. All rights are in the, inherent in the people. The government doesn't have rights. The Tenth Amendment is talking about power. Well, the federal government would only have power over a very, very small portion, only those that were strictly enumerated in the Constitution. And then power that's not specifically delegated to the federal government would go to the states. But they would still only hold a small portion. Their portion might be, let's just look at it on a scale of 1 to 100. 
If the federal government would have the power factor of one, states might have 10 times more power than that. So they would have a power factor of 10. We've got 89 left and that would go to the people. Don't hold me to those exact numbers, but that's just a good way to look at it for people that have more of a visual brain that think about things that way. The United States government has no rights. The state of Michigan has no rights. No, they, they literally don't, actually. Neither does your township board or your county board of commissioners. All rights are inherent in the people, and the government has the power that the people are going to delegate to it. So when my friend, State Representative Jamie Thompson, is voting on the House floor in her capacity as a state representative, she doesn't have any rights on that floor. Now, in her own personal capacity, of course she does. She's a citizen just like the rest of us. Jamie personally has just as many rights as me and you. State Representative Thompson, when she's on the House floor, actually has no rights at all. She only has the power that was delegated to her by we the people in her district in the state of Michigan. And when she goes there, she goes there with that power and authority that the consensus of 90,000 people sent her there for. And that's the perfect lead into what I'm about to show you guys. And I want you to remember that because that's very important because you're going to watch some things happen that you're probably not going to like so much. Before I do that, another super generous super chat from Rudy Fenny. Thanks, man. $100 super chat. Thank you so much, dude. And he's a channel supporter in so many other ways. And awesome, dude. Thank you, man. Another Michigan guy. He says, good night at Marco Polo. Marco, you owe him big time. He just literally spent 100 bucks to say good night to you, Marco. Marco Polo is another awesome dude. No, thank you for helping the channel, Rudy. I really appreciate you, man. Just remember that governments have no rights. Only people have rights. Let's see what happens. Let's see how a gun control bill is passed. I might stop this a couple more times, but we've got about, oh, I'd say 26 minutes left in this video. And let's watch it. And I want to look down in the chat and kind of see what you guys are talking about. And I'll pause it a couple times to check back with y'all. I'll pause it a couple times to show you how they kind of vote for stuff. Okay, but they kind of actually don't vote for stuff. Hold on a minute. Did I just? Yeah, I did just say that. You'll see. Let me get my software set up here. They kind of vote for stuff, but not really <laughs> either. <laughs> Hold on. This is, it's not funny. Okay, it's not funny, but it's like, eh. it do a lot of you good to go watch one of these sessions in Michigan. And if you live in any of these other 50 states, it'd do you a lot of good to go watch yours. I hope it's a little more constitutional than what I see going on in my state house. I really do. But I think it does us a lot of good to see this stuff. One more real quick here. Colin L. with another super chat. Thanks, man. I appreciate you, dude. He says, I worry about the youpers, red flags, non-compliance. We have a rainbow sheriff in Marquette County up in the UP. Um, I would say, and I don't mean to pick on her or nothing like that, just somebody you should be advocating towards. I might look up somebody named Jen Hill in the UP. Okay? You guys have Democrats representing you in Lansing, man, big time. So that's somebody you should maybe get a hold of up in the UP. All right. Um, Dave Flowers, real quick. No, man, I've been, <laughs> you might need to go back to the beginning of this stream here. And I was kind of talking about what the last week's been like for me, but it's not going anywhere. I'm definitely going to, he's talking about the, um, the link club winner, the two, a link club. If you don't know what that is, make sure you go over to locals. It's another site. I could never do cool stuff like that here on YouTube, unfortunately, but go over there and you can read exactly what it is in the bottom of a bunch of my posts over there, but I'll be right on that dude. But thanks for reminding me. That's one of the cool benefits to being a member on my locals community, which is free to join or a place that you can support. All right. I've got this back up. Ease at the call of the chair. All right. Let's watch them come back into session here. Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayaz. Continuing on the order of third reading of bills, I move to take up House Bill 4138 and place it on its immediate passage. 
Without objection, so ordered. The clerk will read. Background check, Bill. House Bill 4138, introduced by Representative Churches, a bill to amend an act to regulate and license the selling, purchasing, possessing, and carrying of certain firearms, People's State of Michigan, an act. The bill was passed temporarily earlier in the session. Without objection, the bill will be considered read for a third time by its title. The bill was not passed like how you guys think, okay? That Ayash, the majority floor leader, he made a big blunder and actually temporarily almost ended the session. And they had a powwow for like 45 minutes that I'm not going to bore you guys with. Passed means like I pass on bringing up legislation. The bill didn't pass like you guys might think. I want to clarify that. It was a big like blunder and he said the wrong thing and almost gaveled themselves out of session. So it had not passed in the general sense of passing. Okay. This lady here, Lori Pohutsky, representative. She's the she's the speaker pro tem. So the speaker of the house is Speaker Joe Tate. Well, he can preside as the speaker and hold the gavel, but usually he delegates it off to sometimes other people, but usually this lady. I don't know what she identifies as. I literally don't, but hey, I'm just using my common sense I was born with. And I'll just say he delegates it off to this woman. Are there amendments? There are amendments. On third reading, amendments let me, require... Let me read it first. Clerk will read. Representative Steele offers a series of amendments identified as amendment number one. On third reading, amendments require support. Is there support? The clerk will open the board. There is not support. Okay, hold on a minute. Do you guys know what just happened there? The clerk will open the board. There's not support. She said there was not support before even one Republican had a chance to support that amendment. Steele's a Republican. I don't know what the amendment said, but it was going to try to amend, most likely poison pill, the anti-gun bill, okay? The Universal Background Check Licensing Registration Scheme. You guys are going to notice something. It's going to repeat itself over and over again. The power's in the gavel. Yeah, the Constitution in Michigan says that for certain things like immediate effect, it has to be a two-thirds vote. But you'll find out later on, that doesn't even matter at all. That means nothing. They're required legally to open the board, meaning that's for you to vote. But she opens it and then shuts it down before anyone even gets time to vote. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if instead of following the rules of the House, the rules of the House, if they were following the actual Michigan Constitution and law, and gave time, I guarantee you there would have been a Republican that was going to support it. There were probably several Republicans raising their hands at that time. She just won't acknowledge them. And you're going to see this continue over and over again. Are there further amendments? There being no further amendments, the question before the House is the passage of the bill. A record roll call vote is required. All those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. The clerk will open the board. Now this is happen here. They're voting like they're going to pass this. But wait. Okay, Saint speaker Dimmer recognizes voted, majority no. floor leader one. Ayash. As we can move to clear the board. So ordered. Okay, they cleared the board. Now they're going to start over. <laughs> speaker recognizes Representative Fisk Frisky. I know his name, Thank don't you? Thank you, Madam you? Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise today in opposition of House Bill 4138. I stand here in opposition because House Bill 4138 is unnecessary, unconstitutional, and undermining the rights of my constituents. Madam Speaker, good moral people follow the law. Bloodthirsty criminals and deranged killers do not. We know the pretext for why this bill is being proposed, Madam Speaker, and this bill would not have prevented this tragedy or any other. In my district in Northern Michigan, it is a common occurrence to pass down family firearms and trade rifles between family members. While the substitute for this bill allows an exemption for gifts, the second, a monetary amount is exchanged, it becomes a crime. This is very confusing. What if you want to buy your deceased loved one's guns to help out their widow or other family members? Are you now a felon? A gun isn't inherently evil. What will this bill actually solve? Madam Speaker, in Northern Michigan, our population density is low. This low population means we don't have a massive gun store in every corner with everything you need 
Because of this, private gun sales of used firearms make up a large portion of gun sales in Northern Michigan. If this House bill becomes law, all of these private citizens would become criminals just for selling their neighbor a shotgun or their brother-in-law a rifle. Madam Speaker, we already have laws like this on the books for handguns. Why do we need it for rifles? What will this prevent? What would it have prevented? Millions of law-abiding citizens. The tragedy at Michigan State, he used the handguns, just so you guys know, that we already had a registry for. Will be labeled as felons overnight if this legislation is allowed to pass. All this bill was do, will do is make criminals out of good-hearted men and women. As a Christian, I believe the death of anyone is a tragedy. I hold the sanctity of life dear, but we need real resolutions to our problems, not the persecution of innocent people. Shall not be infringed means exactly that, shall not be infringed. I urge my colleagues to vote no. Thank you. So he had said that there was a substitute. So check this out. They're voting on House Bill 138. Well, meantime, like earlier in that day, they had put in a substitute bill, which means they had changed the verbiage of the bill. I'm not going to say who it was, but I texted a representative who was on the House floor. And I said, do you have the substitute? And they're like, no, we don't even have the substitute. So I made a phone call, got a hold of the substitute. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. And saying, nope, the substitute's still bad. Don't let them fool you. I still urge you to suppose, I, to oppose. I actually did that to several state reps while they were sitting down there in session because the other side hadn't even given them the new bill that they were going to be voting on, or at least hadn't given it to all of them. Speaker recognizes Representative Regas. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I wish to speak on the package at large, please. So ordered. Thank you. Plain and simple, this bill is not about reducing gun violence. And by the way, it won't. It's about stripping Michigan residents of their rights and their privacy by creating a statewide. You guys remember her from the video I just put out yesterday, right? <clears throat> yes, this woman's a rock star. Love this speech. Registry of every lawful gun owner in Michigan. Criminals don't register, register guns or jump through legal hoops to obtain them. This bill will truly only impact good, innocent Michiganders who have had the right to bear arms, and this will make it harder for them to do so. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle say that this bill will be the solution that keeps guns out of the hands of criminals. But the truth is, our current laws are not being enforced as it is, and this is nothing more than an attempt by our Democrat colleagues to add a gun control talking point to their future campaign speeches. Representative, do not impugn the motives of your colleagues. Speaker recognizes Representative Regas. This bill will not prevent criminals from obtaining guns, but what it will do is pose a burden on law-abiding citizens who want to exercise their Second Amendment rights. This bill, like a pistol registry, is a clear violation of our Second Amendment. It requires all firearms to be listed for a future tyrant use for compensation tyrannical government like we're witnessing here today is why I, the Second Amendment is here in the first place. Simply put, this pill is a slippery slope towards oppressive, authoritative government, or should I say even more oppressive, authoritative government. Here, here. Speaker recognizes Representative DeBoer. So that's called her holding the power of the gavel and just, just gavel down 90,000 people right there. Maybe some of you. Boyer. I like her too, guys. She's a good one. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, it is my pleasure to speak on this House floor. And I will be one here to say that the current members of this body and the previous members of this body have failed the citizens of the state of Michigan. Because we artificially believe that if we pass a law, that if we enter it, that it somehow will prevent a criminal from committing a crime. That's a failure of belief of the members of this house. We've had too many tragedies that were a result of the lack of enforcement of law the lack of enforcement of current law. 
So here we are, debating another legislative act that some may be ecstatic about when we pass. However, we've done nothing to make anyone safer. What we have before us today is a bill, hypothetically, that could become a law tonight. If that becomes a law tonight, we then have to enforce that law. The big problem with that is that we've seen an unwillingness to prosecute and enforce the laws that currently exist on the books today. And unfortunately, we have witnessed a tragedy so very close to our home, so very close to our heart, and had a law been enforced, that may, may have prevented that tragedy. Instead of simply adding more tack-on laws from this chamber, that we, we have no idea what those unintended consequences will be. What we should be doing is enforcing the laws that are on the books. And there is no debate to the point that that is not occurring. Okay, so look, I get the bigger point he's making. I do disagree with him, though, where... No, we don't need to be enforcing any gun control laws on the books because shall not be infringed means if there was even one gun control law, it would be unconstitutional. Now, the point he's making on this debate, though, is this. We already have all these laws on the books, and the reason you're hearing him pounding, but we didn't enforce the laws on the books because there's laws that would have actually prevented this crazy person from MSU, from being able to do that because he should have been in jail. He had had a firearms offense previously that was already a crime, okay? I don't think it should be a crime to carry a pistol in your vehicle without a CPL in Michigan. No, that should not be a crime. But the fact that it was already a crime and they didn't prosecute him proves that, look, we're going to pass all these laws, but if you don't enforce them, then even when people get caught red-handed breaking the law, they're still going to be free to do whatever they're going to do with the firearm. So, no, I don't agree that we should enforce laws on the books. But in the context he's talking about here, and I'm not trying to put words in his mouth. I'm just telling you guys a little bit of chess involved. What he's trying to say is, you all want more gun control laws. Then why didn't you enforce the ones that we already had? Because this guy could have been in jail, but he wasn't in jail, and he was able to do this. So. I get the sense of what he's saying. However, I don't think there should be any gun control laws on the books at all in Michigan, and none of them should be enforced, and you shouldn't need a CPL to carry a pistol. In fact, there are organizations in this country and in our state that their stated motivation is to not enforce those laws as we've written. That's an embarrassment. This bill will burden law-abiding citizens, law-abiding citizens. This will do absolutely nothing to stop a criminal from acting when their evil heart has decided to act. What we're doing is weakening the innocent. We're weakening the law-abiding citizens if we pass this bill. Guys, this is the good part. These are the good ones here talking right now. We're going to get to the you know what show in just a minute. I just want you guys to get a little sense of this. These are actually the good ones. So hold on. You guys are literally about to see some literal insanity in a few minutes. Like, okay, hold on. Like, tell all your friends, like, hey, get ready to come over to the 2A EDU stream. I promise you, I'm not joking. Give us a couple more minutes here. I might fast forward through a couple of these other Democrats in a minute. He's a Republican, but when we get, you're going to see stuff that's like, <sighs> so get your helmets on because your brains might explode in just a few minutes, guys. I'm reading the chat. Just wait. <laughs> this will put onerous obligations again on law-abiding citizens, not to mention it will burden our police departments with busy work while departments are underfunded and understaffed and additionally by some in our society 
believe that they should be underfunded? Do we really believe that this bill will stop crime? Do we really believe that this bill would have prevented the tragedy that existed so close to our home? I think there's a very simple answer, and I think in our hearts we all know that the answer to that is no. This may seem like a great idea on paper, but I believe this legislation's an overreach. I believe it violates the constitutional rights of the people in my district, in the state of mm -hmm. Michigan as well. And I am most certainly a no vote on this, and I would encourage every member of this body to be a vote no, no vote. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Speaker recognizes Representative Preston. Okay, hold on. <laughs> You're going to see some crap in a minute here. Yes, he was playing some chess with some of that. And again, I don't want to speak for him, for the representative, but he was playing a little chess saying, look, we already have all these laws. I, I think I kind of explained it. But no, I don't agree with any gun control laws at all. And I'm not sure if he agrees with them either, but I do know the chess he was playing. This is, this is what's part of politics is, you know, when you're on the House floor doing these debates. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This bill aims to address the rise in gun violence in Michigan, but instead misses the mark. The plan creates a false sense of security for Michiganders and infringes on the rights and responsibilities of law-abiding gun owners throughout the state without actually doing anything to address the real problem, the rise of violent crime in Michigan. We must address the root cause contributing to the rise in gun violence access to reliable mental health, improving school security, promoting the nuclear family instead of constantly eroding the, the American family union with its inherent values we grew up with. Not one other state carries such an overreaching requirement, and there's good reason for that. This bill will, bill will not only prevent criminals from obtaining guns if they so choose, it will, however, pose a burden on responsible law-abiding citizens simply wishing to exercise their Second Amendment rights. Requiring background checks for every single firearm transaction, including private family sales. Notice Angela brought in a bunch of flags, but she brought in the little teeny ones. She was able to skirt by. I don't know, maybe she'll be in trouble for those too. I have no idea. I hope she's not in trouble, but I know Frisky and Kara were like, they were threatened to be in big trouble. But I don't know. I just noticed the little flags she has there. I don't think she really cared, actually. She just, I don't think she asked anybody to bring those in. Is fr frankly impractical. Further, the measure will deter good, honest Michiganders from purchasing firearms, handing them down as heirlooms, a common practice among gun owning families, and preventing them from taking part in deeply rooted traditions like hunting. I encourage my colleagues to vote no on this bill and instead focus on solutions that actually address the root causes of gun violence, such as tackling the lack of enforcement of our existing laws. Thank you. Look, somebody just mentioned speeches and speaking from the heart. It's funny yet again. It's like we're all just connected like psychically. I was talking to a state rep earlier today on the phone that was talking about speaking from the heart versus a pre-written speech. Look, there's different reasons why that would be. And quite frankly, some people aren't the best at memorizing things. Some people on the house floor would get nervous speaking in front of such so many people. And there's a whole bunch of people in the gallery too. So I can see both sides of it. Yes, from the heart, but like, I don't have any scripts whatsoever for these, but I'll tell you guys a little secret. You might not believe me, but I promise it's true. If there was a thousand people on here watching right now, I don't know how many there are. It still says zero on my screen, but I know it can't be because you guys are engaging in the chat, okay? There's just something going on with this software. If you were to put me in front of like 50 people in a live crowd, I would kind of get stage fright just so you guys know. So with that said, I, I can, I'm not going to totally knock people from reading their speech because we're just not all the same. I have millions and millions of combined views, but it's just different. When you're in front of like the crowd and you're like standing up. So I, I get it. I kind of do because I kind of have a little bit of stage fright myself. And I'm not saying any of these reps have stage fright. I just kind of understand why some people would read it, you know. Speaker recognizes Representative Carter. 
Oh Thank boy. You, Madam Speaker. Is this the representative this Carter? The whole package. So ordered. Thank you. I stand today in support of House Bill 4138, 4142, and 4143. 23 states. Oh, this looks like the representative Carter. For those of you that watch all my stuff, remember the night that the tragedy happened at MSU? I was like, look, Detroit Free Press just put out this video. And they're telling us how they're going to do all this gun control. And as I'm telling you what their plan is, the tragedy happens. And then the very next day, they blew up the Capitol with people running in there and gun control. Okay, fast forward. If you remember from that article, I believe this is the Representative Carter that's the head of the what I call anti-Second Amendment caucus in the House. So there you go. Just to connect this back with the previous video. Including Michigan have some sort of background check laws regarding the purchase of firearms. However, currently our law only requires background checks on the purchases of See the flags, guys? and other handguns. There's the flags. But does not require them to them on the purchase of long guns. These bills this these bills would change this. This bill package will require background checks on all gun purchases. Universal background checks have a wide, have wide support in Michigan and, and are one of the most basic steps we can take to diminish gun violence we witness in our state and throughout our nation. The comprehensive background checks would fully close this dangerous loophole and strengthen Michigan's law by re requiring background checks on unlicensed firearm sales, <laughs> including shotgun and rifle sales. Prior to purchasing a shotgun or rifle from an unlicensed seller, the bill must be the bill would require purchases to obtain a purchase or carry license. It's time that we finally pass this package. Well, then I would counter with: Do we need? Okay, we're all endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. The First Amendments and Second Amendment sit right next to each other. What would the representative think if I said that you should have to buy a permit? And background check for that rainbow flag. Just asking for a friend. That is why I encourage all of my colleagues to vote in favor of this bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. She took the oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of Michigan. Just saying. Speaker recognizes Representative Churches. Okay, guys, hold on a minute. Linda, I need to read two super chats. I need to read a couple super chats, and I need you guys to give me a hug, and I'm going to need to drink this lemon water and some of this equate in the proxy sodium. The speaker recognizes Jamie Churches. Did I hear that right? Did she just say the speaker? Pop up a couple of those on the screen, darling. D did I have that right, guys? Just give me a second here. You might see me fall over in a minute. The speaker recognizes Jamie Churches. Get ready, boys and girls. Just wait for this. Oh, man. Oh, it's good to see a good friend here. The reptile guys. What's happening, man? How you doing? Thanks for the super chat, dude. I really appreciate you. He says, you guys are awesome. I wish I could spare 100 bucks, but doing what I can to help really appreciate you man i know you're grinding just like i am doing landscaping trust me dude i know there's not much money in it do dude you work hard for your money everybody here is working hard for their money sending me a dollar a hundred dollars i appreciate that because that's giving you you know you're giving me back some of your valuable time and efforts that it took you to earn it so thanks so much dude and i'm glad to see you here man Thanks, Reptile Guys. Colin L. again. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Another super chat. He says, there should be a penalty for false red flag laws. Five years in prison, felony, and a fine of 10K. Here, here. At least. I agree with you. At least. Okay? Me and you might debate because I might want more than that. And you might too, but yeah, at a minimum, right? Thanks, man. I appreciate it. There's Jane that was hanging out with me. Jane was hanging out with me here that day. I said hi to you earlier, Jane. I don't know if you were in here or not. There she is, Vietnam vet. She's still kicking it strong. I even said something really sarcastic to her. 
she kind of lifted up like she was going to punch me, and I didn't want her to because I think it would still hurt. What's up, Jane? Rudy Finney with another super chat. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, dude. I appreciate it, dude. I'm kind of laughing because of what he said. <coughs> he says, I, there's an I emoji, then like a here, then a bull, and then a pile of poop coming. That's the family-friendly version of his super chat. Just hold on. Literally two seconds, guys. The chair recognizes representative churches. You guys have never even seen this before on a house floor. Just wait. All right. All right, cool. Okay. Whew. Let me come over here. I'm not joking, guys. I'm trying to make this fun, and I'm being overly exuberant. No, just wait. This is Thank the you, representative man. that won by the narrowest margin in the whole entire Michigan House of Representatives. So this is the most swing district there is. Keep this in mind. This is a house that has a two-seat Democrat majority. Keep that in mind. Madam Speaker, permission to speak on the entire package. So ordered. So I could stand here and I could share polling data with you. I could share research to support common sense gun reform. But required background checks are just that. They're common sense. I do not need research. I do not need statistics <laughs> to know that in the wrong hands. Wouldn't understand them anyways. Guns intimidate. In my opinion. Guns kill. My community has never seen a mass shooting. It That's has good. never made headlines. It has never been in the news. That's good. Be happy about but that. But my community knows the impact of the ripple of trauma by the lack of inaction created by this distinctly American problem of gun violence. During the summer of 2019, I had professional development um, <laughs> at an elementary school that I worked at. And we were taught how to prepare ourselves and our students to brace our school for an active shooter. We did this in partnership with our local police department and a friend of mine, our lieutenant, led this training. So he wanted us to know what the sound of a gun was like. So he shot a blank weapon. I remember the sound of the gun. I remembered the plume of smoke and the smell, kind of like sulfur almost. That happened in our school library, an elementary school library where I have to go and teach. This is a place where my kids would go to read, to draw, to color, to learn and be with their friends. Now at school, I have to teach kids how to survive. The morning after Oxford, I knew it would be a tough morning because I have to answer the questions that people in this room don't have to, don't have the courage to. Every day before art or music or gym, I sit my kids in a circle in the front of my room at the carpet. I had a mailbox they put slips of paper in. Usually they want to talk about their football game. They want to talk about their loose tooth. They want me to fix a problem that they're having with their friends at recess. That day, they assembled themselves at my, at my carpet in a circle in silence. They waited for me. They did lunch count by themselves. And a kid brought me my mailbox. The mailbox was full. I doubt it. I didn't even ask them to do it. They did it themselves. Because people like us don't do enough. We haven't done enough. We've made enough excuses. At our morning meeting, I sat there in silence, terrified to have to answer these questions, to have to read these questions from these kids. They asked me things like, what if the shooter comes here? Why do people do this? What if I have a sibling in the school? What if they shoot you? What if I fall? 
Sniff this run. representative. Maybe it'll help calm What if down. I'm too afraid and I forget what to do? These are the questions that I don't have the answers to. I had to answer those questions because people like us don't have the courage to. If people in rooms like this and people like us would have done better, would have been doing more, I might still be in my classroom right now. But instead, I'm here doing this work. <laughs> She's violent. We have been conditioned to look away. I'm glad she doesn't carry a gun. She's violent, in my we opinion. We have been conditioned to carry on. We have allowed people in organizations with means and power to influence our decisions in the way that we govern in this room. This package will not take anything away from gun owners. It will merely be an inconvenience to you. Take away your IQ point. The same way you inconvenience my curriculum so I can teach my kids survival. Gosh, she looks so dangerous. A required background check, much like every parent who comes into my classroom has to have to read to my students. Required background checks, they ensure run, guns are kept out of the wrong hands. Talon, baby girl's not watching this, is she? This isn't even family friendly. I don't want to have to be here right now. I don't want to have to do I this. I don't want you to be now. there either. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to sponsor this bill. Listen to this. I'm afraid to support gun reform. I am afraid that men with guns will intimidate me. I'm afraid that men with guns will threaten me. You look threatening, Rep. But I am not afraid enough to act. Ooh. So today I ask you to stand with me. I ask you to be afraid with me. I ask you to change your mind. Does she look dangerous to understand you guys? the importance I feel of this. From this will not end gun violence. This will simply be a step in doing something. So our future generations don't have to do this anymore. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> I told you guys it gets better, Members, didn't I? Please remember to keep your comments directed to the speaker and not your colleagues. Okay, so hold on a minute. She literally goes through and lets her do that long rant. And then at the very end, oh, by the way, please keep your comments directed to the speaker. Representative Regas got to speak, what, 45 seconds before she was gaveled the first time? 45 seconds before she was gaveled totally off the floor? I, I said dog and pony show earlier, did I not? Thank you, Madam Speaker. I am speaking today in support of House Bill 4143 a bill that creates uniformity in our state's gun purchases through universal background checks. I sponsored this bill, uh, let's see who this and as a is. gun owner and a parent, I believe I should have the ability to protect my family against harm, but in order to have that power to protect- Okay, quick question. I, I wanna take a quick poll from you guys that are in here. We're almost done with this video. So I did like, um, this rep gets it, and I can't remember what the title was. Let me get over here real quick with the representative Riga. Epic. This rep gets it. Two A defender rises against gun control. Should I clip out the representative church's one and do a standalone video and say, unhinged, scary rep threatens whoever or whatever the title would be? Let me know if I should pull the representative churches out and do a video. I'm not promising it either way. I'm just wondering if you guys think more people to know need to know about some of the things going on on the house floor protect my child i like everyone else should have to pass a background check hmm. it's part of being a responsible gun owner mm -hmm. i am not naive i doubt it i know universal background checks are not a panacea for the gun violence epidemic we face in our country I also know there needs to be Wait. a culture shift in how we think about and respond to this public health crisis. Mm -hmm. And yes, this is a public health crisis. 
Why? Because guns are the leading cause of death among children and Notice she didn't say people with guns, guns themselves. And I'm going to go back to that hearing earlier. When they were talking about, this was the hearing for this bill that you're now seeing them. They're going to vote on it in literally five minutes, guys. The whole thing they were saying during that hearing, and this is what she's echoing, is this is not going to be enough. They literally admitted and said, we admit that every one of these bills is not going to stop any crime. They literally actually admitted it at certain points in the hearing. They said, however, we need to pass all of this as a foundation so then we can come in and pass a whole lot more than that because then those will actually help. And Speaker Tate said something very similar in that video that I just did the other day. So keep in mind what she's getting at here. This is the new thing now. So as the, in this case, it's Republicans versus Democrats only because every Republican voted no, every Democrat voted yes. I hate the two-party system as much as any of you guys. So, but I'm just calling a spade a spade here. So the Republicans talking point is none of this will work. And it used to be the Democrats would come back and say, yes, it works. No, 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 no. We're in like sixth generation warfare now. Now the Dems are saying, you guys are right. None of this will work. That's why we need to pass it. And since this won't work, we need to pass like a hundred times more. I'm not kidding, guys. I literally sat in on the hearing that led to this. I watched how the sausage was made before it got to this. It's literally getting to be that hyperbolic now. Teens in Michigan. I have witnessed far too many children bury their friends and family in my district in Southeast Grand Rapids. It is not okay, and I will not ignore it. Mass shootings have become almost commonplace in America and right here. We have seen it at Oxford High School, at MSU, and also in our own neighborhoods. Yeah, and like John Lott said, there's been almost a million people that were protected with a gun. Where astronomically more good lives are saved with guns, but they won't tell you that. The places where our children are supposed to grow and explore. Between 2011 and 2020, gun deaths have increased by 24 percent. This is a good book, state. Representative Grant. Is this not a cause give for alarm? Quick, it talks about so let a subject us like address a this as a crisis that the data want. proves it to be, and that most importantly, the children and families in my community know it to be. This bill for universal background checks is a step towards addressing the crisis. It's a step towards the culture See, shift step. we need That's to make we happen. Need more. We talk about economic development and incentives for people to come, but what about protecting the people who are here? If more guns, less crime, Representative. The link's down in the description of this video. I suggest you read it. If we can stop even a tiny amount of gun violence in our state and in our neighborhoods, we must take the steps to do that. All of the steps, and this is one of them. Say, all of the steps, and this is just one of them. Listen, guys, they're orchestrating the plan right in front of you. No matter where you personally stand on gun ownership, we must all stand against gun violence. We cannot turn a deaf ear, deaf ear to the pain of the children and families that we serve any longer. We must stand up to protect our kids. And this is the first of those many steps. The time for political games is over. It is time for action. We are not here to protect the rights games. of the gun industry. Our children need to know that we hear their cries. I urge you to vote yes on this bill. Thank you. I wouldn't give her an A in theatrics like churches, House, but I would give her a B minus. Record roll call vote is required. All those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. The clerk will open the board. Here's how they're going to vote. Watch how this happens in a second here. You guys want to see another <laughs> dog and pony show vote in a minute? This is actually a real vote here, okay? Let's see here. There she is. Thompson, no. Guys, I told you, she's my friend. I'm watching her the closest. If I would have saw that turn green, I'd end this stream and drive over to her place. Even though she's not afraid of me, but I got to act tough about this. Okay, guys? You guys are going to see this as a party line vote. 
people have been asking me, they're like, how do we know which ones voted for this? It's real simple. In the, we'll close the board. Okay, hold on. There's a link down in the description that says contact Michigan reps and then Michigan senators. It's this easy. Click on that. It's going to take you right to a page where you can look at Michigan Democrats, Michigan Republicans for the House. If you want to know every single person that voted for this, just click on the Democrats and every single Democrat voted for this, okay? I'm not saying they're good people just because they're Republicans. Again, I'm just telling you guys because this is a factual thing. This is how you can find them. If you click on House Republicans, every single Republican voted against this with Representative Brock not being there. From what I understand, he was called to service because he's active duty, I think. I hope I didn't get those details wrong, but that's what people had told me. So that's why you see one person in white there and... I believe it has something to do with his active duty military status. Tell me if I'm wrong, but that's what I've heard. So that's how you guys can find out. So here's the board. I'm pausing it again one more time. A lot of people have been asking me this question over and over again. Who voted for it? So you can see all of their names here. And then if you want to know literally how to contact them, it's as simple as just clicking on the link, contact your Michigan reps down in this description, click on Democrats. That's just for this vote. I'm not telling you guys Republicans. I don't know what the next vote's going to be. But right now, you can just click on the Democrats, and they'll put them all in one list. All of them voted for it. So hopefully that helps you guys. Tally display and announce today's vote. As Party line motion, vote. Final passage of House Bill 4138. There are 56 I votes and 53 nay votes. Majority of the members elected and serving having voted therefore, the bill is passed. That's Speaker it. recognizes majority floor leader Ayash. I move for immediate effect. Majority floor leader moves immediate effect. Now, hold on. This requires a vote. The Michigan Constitution says it has to be a two-thirds vote before it can take immediate effect. Watch what happens. All those in favor will rise. Immediate effect is ordered. The power is in the gavel. The power is in the hands of, I'll just say her. This is what it's turned into. It's turned into that it needs two-thirds majority to get immediate effect. We know it wouldn't have got two-thirds majority if they actually voted because look at the board. I mean, we can't prove this, but most likely, okay, all the people that voted against this bill would not be voting for it to then have immediate effect. Stands the reason? And even if one person went nuts and just all of a sudden changed their mind on this whole topic in the 10 seconds after they voted previously, it still wouldn't be enough for it to be two-thirds. Now, there's also a provision in the law that says that a member can seek recognition, and I forget the exact name for it, but they can make a certain request. And if 21 people ask for it, that they have to do the A's and nays on the board. And I no doubt that 21 Republicans would have stood there and requested to make the immediate effect a formal vote, just like the bill itself that you just saw. However, the powers in the gavel, all powers in the gavel, where she does not have to. I would bet you there was Republicans raising their hands to seek recognition while all that tap, 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 tap ordered. There were people trying to butt in, but she doesn't have to acknowledge them. So this is what probably just happened. Maybe one Democrat stood up because she said, all rise. Maybe one of them did. Maybe two did. But in the opinion of the chair, which is this lady right here, Bahutsky, she, in her opinion, she saw the, that majority. I don't know what else to tell you guys. You must be thinking, but wait, there's more. No, that's how they pass bills through the Michigan House nowadays. The law says they have to open the board, but she can close it as soon as she sees. In her opinion, if she saw one person stand, in her opinion, that was 60-something people, okay? 70 people, whatever it would be. Go read the Michigan Constitution. Go read the laws, the statutes that are public acts, they're called in Michigan. Public acts that talk about this. Read those. Watch what you just saw happen and start spinning around in circles till you get so dizzy you're going to puke. I don't know what else to tell you guys. I'm just being frank with you right now. I think by me calling her a lady, I might be offending her slightly, guys, so just humor me on this. 
I don't know her pronouns. I don't care. But I'm just, I don't know what else to call her. But that was immediate effect. Now, if you go back and watch the video from Senator Bellino and Rep Thompson, that's a very important video to watch. This is where I want you guys to spit that black pill out because just because they passed it with a media effect in the house with, in my opinion, let's just call a spade a spade, no vote at all on a media effect, a farce of a vote, if that, at the very most. We still have the Senate. The Senate still has different rules in place. We can still block a media effect in the Senate. The senator explains how it works. It's just in my recent videos here if you go to my channel if you're new here. So this isn't the end all with this. We still have the Senate. There are different procedures there as of now. Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Well, order quick, this bills will take a possible four and four two and place it on its immediate passage. Okay, so it's 11 bills that end up being three subjects. So there's actually 4138 was the main, you know, background check registration licensing scheme bill. But they also need to pass two more bills that we're going to see here that I had talked about in previous videos. Those have to go in before that 4138 has any teeth because these are going to change now the criminal statutes. So watch how quick they vote these through. Without objection, so ordered, the clerk will read. House Bill 4142, introduced by Representative Brenda Carter, a bill to amend the Michigan Penal Code, people of the state of Michigan, and act. Without objection, the bill will be considered read for a third time by its title. Are there amendments? There being no amendments, the question for the House is the passage of the bill. A record. The thing is, even if there was amendment, she'd still say there's no amendments half the time, okay? I'm just saying. Third roll call vote is required. All those in favor vote aye. Those opposed nay. The clerk will open the board. Okay, so I'll open the board on this. But now watch what will happen with the other part. You'll see. I mean, it's like almost 10 at night, so they're voting quick right now. Let's check on Thompson. I'm being dead serious, guys. She's my friend. I'm watching her the closest. She's my representative. Okay, there we go. She's still good. Clerk will close the board. Tally display and announce the vote. Party line. Speaker on the question of final pass of House Bill 4142. There are 56 I votes, 53 nay votes. A majority of the members elected and serving, having voted therefore, the bill is passed. I'll wait for that. Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. I move for immediate effect. Majority Floor Leader moves to immediate effect. All those in favor, please rise. Immediate effect is ordered. 110 people just supposedly voted right there. I'm going to be serious. Supposedly. Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Continuing on the order of third reading bills, I'm going to take a possible 4143 and place it on its immediate passage. Blah, 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 blah. What? Hopefully they understood that. Without objection, so ordered. The clerk will read. House Bill 4143, introduced by Representative Grant, a bill to amend the Code of Criminal Procedure. People stay Wait, did I ask literally say, he might be a nice guy, I don't know him. Probably not, actually, but did he just say Shubin and I'm going to dash out of pressure? We'll have to listen to that. In Michigan, an act. Without objection, the bill will be considered read for a third time by its title. Are there amendments? There being no amendments, the question for the House is... Even if there were, she'd still say that. Trust me. Passage of the bill. A record roll call vote is required. All those in favor vote aye. Those opposed nay. The clerk will open the board. All right. Let's vote here. You guys can take a guess. I'm going to guess it's party lines again. Let's see here. I'll bet one of you a dollar. All right. Yep, Thompson. She's still good. She's still good. All right. Let's see here. <laughs> clerk will close the board. Tally display and announce the vote. I speak of the question of final passage of House Bill 4143. There are 56 I votes and 53 nay votes. Majority of the members elected and serving, having voted therefore, the bill is passed. <clears throat> Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. I move for Did she look like she was like, mm. I'm just asking you guys. I don't know what to think of this. For immediate effect. Majority Floor Leader moves to immediate effect. All the do, you guys, do you guys think he just beat level up on his game? Watch this. Look at this. Look at this. This is your God-given natural right to keep and bear arms. I think we just saw the majority floor leader level up. Watch this. What's that game? What's that game you guys play? The Candy Crush. I literally think, in my opinion, let's watch this again. In my opinion, the majority floor leader just literally leveled up on Candy Crush while he mumbled through. Yeah. Like, literally trying to infringe upon your natural right to keep and bear arms. Let's watch this again. Majority of members elected and serving, having voted therefore, the bill is passed. 
Okay. Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. I move for immediate effect. Majority Ding. Floor Leader. Level 37 granted. Now let's see how long it takes to gavel your rights away from you. Leader moves to immediate effect. All those in favor, please rise. Immediate effect is ordered. 109 people just voted, supposedly. Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Move to the order. Motions and resolutions. He's still playing that game. We just watched the majority floor leader level up on Candy Crush while she's just smacking that gavel down. Jeez, oh, Pete. Without objection, so ordered. Speaker recognizes majority floor leader Ayaz. Thank you, Mr. You just let the members know there'll be no further voting in the House of Georgia. Okay, no matter what. He just said, shoot it on the national pressure. I'm going back. Just give me a second here, guys. Then I'm going to hang out with you guys in the chat. If you listen closely, you can hear him leveling up on Candy Crush as she gavels away your right to keep him bare arms. And then he comes in and says, you on not the nest of the pressure. All right, let's listen to this. So ordered. Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayaz. Thank you, Mr. You just let the members know there'll be no further voting in the House of Georgia Senate until Thursday, March 9th at 12 o'clock noon. Without objection, so ordered. The House, House this of America. This is the way they, This is the way you lose the Second Amendment in the state of Michigan? He literally leveled up on Candy Crush and then said, shoot it on an ass at a pressure. Huh. I will say, though, that in my opinion, representative churches probably got an A plus in whatever acting school that she went to. I do have to say that. Did you guys see that? That's literally like, that was literally officially a vote for immediate effect. Now, the Senate has different rules, guys. The Senate has different rules. The Senate has been talking about trying to change their rules, too. Did you guys know that? Okay, look. All of you guys that live in Michigan, did you know this was going on in your state capitol? With your natural right to keep and bear arms. Seriously, answer me if you guys don't mind. I just want to know. Like, You guys remember that old country song? It was Toby Keith. I wish somehow I didn't know now what I didn't know then. Look, I, I love going to Lansing because I think I need to right now. And a lot of us need to know what's going on. But geez, oh, Pete, I thought they actually like voted on this stuff. Now, in all fairness, you saw the rec recorded votes, but those whole immediate effect votes, it's literally a joke. That's a big deal, in my opinion. Are there any, is there any support for the amendments? She's seen no support. It's like, really? You guys saw that earlier? I'm pretty sure we watched the majority floor leader level up on Candy Crush while he said, shoot me, I'm in a national pressure. Like the former vice president, that must be contagious. It must be contagious, whatever it is, where people just stop even taking the effort to speak. It's like, geez, nothing important going on here. I moved to the, it's just, it's just the second amendment. I mean, why would we even take time? Why would we even speak the words that were, you know what I mean? It's just kind of one of those things. And you watch that, that woman, the actress, in my, in my opinion, the, the, the renowned actress, in my opinion, darling, whoever's watching this, in my opinion, the actress, you watched her impugn everybody. I think including herself, in my opinion, at a certain point, impugned everyone in the world after her 30-minute diatribe. Please try to keep the uh, comments directed to the speaker. Angela Regas gets gaveled down every 13 seconds. It was just a week before that. Jamie Thompson's gaveled down trying to talk. Shoot away from the microphone. They did this trick where they finally let her speak, but then they said, oh, it's too late for you to speak now. Remember that whole thing in the Supreme Court where they're like, it's too early to sue. You don't have standing. You have to wait until the election happens. One second after the election happened, they said, no, nope, now it's too late to have standing. It was too early. One second ago, one second later, it was too late. That's what they did to Thompson two weeks ago. We won't let you speak now. Okay, we'll let you speak. She says one word and they're like, nope. It's too late to speak now. It's like, are you kidding me? But this other one's allowed to rant and rave. 
and in my opinion, menacingly rant and rave in a very unhinged fashion. And I'm not even joking when I say this. I can see some people getting scared with her demeanor and just her feroce, you know, ugh, ferociousness. I mean, that's somebody who has a lot of power. That's a sitting state representative. That's a very powerful position. And to, to act like that, I thought at the very least it was menacing, if not intimidating. Look, this is just my opinion yet again, but it's my opinion that Representative Churches was trying to scare people from urging her to vote no. I mean, when you bare your teeth and yell and scream at people, that's normally to ward them off. I believe, in my opinion, she's trying to make people scared with the powerful position she has of even possibly voicing their opinions on the Second Amendment. What do you guys think? I don't know. These are all just my opinions, but I could see. I think a reasonable person could see where a constituent might be afraid. To walk into that representative's office. And that's sad because people need to have contact with their representatives. Yeah. I don't know. But we just watched the package of gun control bills pass through. There's some fighters in Lansing. There really are. And I encourage you guys to get behind those reps. There's some people that are obviously fighting, in my opinion, for the other side. And I would hope you wouldn't be getting behind them. They vote on bills to a point, but then some of the other votes they take, it doesn't really look like they vote too much, does it? But I'm going to keep going back as much as I can and as long as I can and you guys have been generously supporting, and I will put those funds to good use to go back up to the Capitol yet again because, look, I know it seems futile and it seems like whatever, but as soon as you think to yourself, things can't get worse, things can actually get worse. And we could go from 31 gun control bills to 41, maybe to 51. I mean, they might try to – I'm not even joking when I say this, guys. They literally might try to put – 100 gun control bills forth. And with, in my opinion, how hostile you can see that it gets sometimes. Man, I think we the people need to be there and make sure that our freedom fighting representatives are okay. Because the way some of these people are acting right now, it's quite intimidating, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to read the chat just for a second here. Because I think a lot of you guys get it, exactly what's going on here. And they rushed more bills through the Senate committee very quickly. And I expect probably votes on those right at the beginning of the week next week. So I'm going to be back again in Lansing as much as I can. I can't go there every day, guys. I don't know how long I'll even be able to keep the pace I am up, but I'll keep it up as long as I think that it's helping make some type of a difference. Because, of course, we want these bills to not pass, but more important, and that's how I started this stream, is we're clearly in a culture war. I mean, if you look at the way some people are talking on the House floor versus how other people are talking on the House floor, if you look at how some people are talking on Main Street versus how other people talk on Main Street, or down a gravel dirt road where you live versus Main Street in another town. The contrast is stark right now. And there's a lot of people right now just lining up to try to bulldoze the norms and the constitution of this country. And sometimes you lose a battle but can still come back and win the war. Sometimes you can lose the war, though. By winning a battle. You can win the battle at the expense of losing the war. And I believe that's called a Pyrrhic victory. They're celebrating and rejoicing right now. 
In this case, it happens to be the Michigan Democrats. Next bill, it could be a rhino that crosses over to. I don't know. I hope not, but it could be. But I hope this is a Pyrrhic victory for these gun grabbers, that they may be winning this battle and they may win another small battle, but at the expense of them losing the whole war. Because just the plain reading of these bills, many of these bills, most of these bills, probably all of these bills, clearly violate the recent Supreme Court precedent, the SCOTUS, Supreme Court of the United States president, with the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. Clearly, in my opinion, and I hope in judges' opinions as well, obviously, violate Heller, McDonald, and obviously, as Representative Frisky said, shall not be infringed, means shall not be infringed, and duh, of course this all violates that. I don't want to lose any battles. I didn't want this bill to pass. It still has to go through the Senate, but they're going to pass it too, guys. And then it has to go to the governor's desk, and she will sign it, no matter what, probably. I don't even think I need to say probably. I'll just say she's going to sign it. But if the Senate can hold the line and not let it take immediate effect, they could just keep pushing this so much further and just make this so draconian and so much that even though they won 100 battles, it was a Pyrrhic victory because it was at the expense of them losing the whole war when Clarence Thomas and company could come and put the smack down on all of this. Because, yeah, I get it. Pohutsky holds the power of the gavel. And she gaveled down Regis within seconds while she let churches ramble on for seemingly hours. But we have three separate branches of government for a reason. And, and Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, and hopefully it'll be Amy Coney Barrett, hopefully it'll be Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, and you know, in other words, a majority, hopefully they'll slam their gavel down. And I'll tell you what, their gavel holds a lot more weight than the gavel that you just saw in that Michigan House hearing. So I want you guys to be concerned because there is cause for concern in Michigan. You need to be concerned. You can't just put your head in the sand because evil prevails when good men do nothing. But I don't want you to swallow that black pill where you're like, it's all over. There's nothing that can happen. We need to stop this stuff from having immediate effect. They can't announce they're officially doing it right now because they haven't started it yet because they can't. But we have local groups like Great Lakes Gun Rights. Six months into the term of these representatives, they can start recall petitions. And I think that is actually a valid effort. And when that starts heating up, and it will, I'll be informing you on that. I think a few of those representatives should be recalled, violating their oath for the first and foremost. But some of these are in very, very vulnerable districts. So that's something maybe some of you can look forward to in the relatively near future. A lot of us pay yearly or monthly or just whatever we can here and there to places like the GOA. And I hope they'll be there ready to go with litigation and the Second Amendment Foundation and the FPC, and many others. So this is very concerning, and you need to remind all your friends and family that they need to be concerned and that they need to get involved. But at the same time, if we can realize that but still keep our chin up enough to keep fighting, there is still some light at the end of the tunnel, and there is still somewhat of a plan. I'm going to go back to Lansing again soon, like I just said, for two reasons. Because somebody has to, and I know a lot of you are trying to, and I know a lot of you are, but a lot of you aren't, and you can't. So I'll try to bring back as much information as I possibly can to keep you guys informed. I'm also trying to offer some motivation and show that, look, I'm a nobody. I'm a landscaper out there plowing snow in the middle of the night. That's how I started that video that I showed tonight. My car broke down, and I Got my car fixed, and good friends like a lot of you guys helped me afford to be able to fix my car like that just on a whim to get right back up to Lansing. So 
You guys have had my back. I'm going to have your back. And I want this stream and all of these videos to be a dire warning to all of you. Yes, but at the same time, keep your chin up enough for it to be encouragement too. I, I think we can think about both topics at the same time. And it's hard for me to sometimes, but I appreciate all of you who keep me encouraged. And I'm certainly trying to encourage all of you. Dig in your heels, put on your game face, but keep your chin up enough where you can try to look forward. We need to look forward and we need to move forward. And as long as you still got a breath left in your body, you still have a chance and there's still some major things that can come at play soon. So don't completely give up. If you want to just move away from Michigan, that's fine with me. I don't care what you personally do with you and your family, but I'm not doing that right now. We just lost a battle and we're probably going to lose quite a few more battles very soon, probably in days and obviously also in weeks. But we have separate branches of government and we have petitions and we have many things. And you guys are going to see all of that start to play out very soon. All right. I'm getting ready to get off of here in just one second. I've gone over two hours. There was some major glitch with YouTube tonight where apparently it still shows that my stream's getting ready to start. And that's why on my end it says I have zero viewers. But I know a lot of you guys were here tonight and probably would have been a lot more if it wasn't for whatever glitch YouTube's doing. But I will be on Locals hanging out with you guys again this weekend for a live stream. And I will be in real life with Representative Thompson tomorrow at Supermatch GNA. If you're interested, I've posted it on Locals. I've posted it on Facebook. And also right here on this channel in the community tab, I encourage any of you guys who are in southeastern Michigan to come and hang out with us. Meet me. Meet Representative Thompson and... Definitely hope I can see a couple of you guys there tomorrow. Colin Smith had come in with one more super chat. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, dude. He said, I agree. There should be more of a penalty. But trying to point out that there are no repercussions for a false report. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I thought you did. I was saying it kind of tongue-in-cheek. Like, I agree with you, but it should be worse. And hopefully you caught my sarcasm. You didn't need to send me another super chat to say that. I already knew we were on the same page. But I do appreciate it and that. Definitely does help the channel. All right, guys, I am going to check these comments. It's a busy weekend for me, but I will have time to go back and read all of them, as I always do. And I'll see some of you guys in real life tomorrow. And then I will also see some of you guys online over the weekend here on Locals. So make sure you're a member over there so we can hang out a little bit more for more content. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And have a good one.